So today we're back talking about the tractor, the 52 John Deere. I know a lot of you have subscribed for my gun content and others of you have subscribed for the Jeep content. I get it, I've got more gun, gun stuff coming, I've got more Jeep stuff coming. Uh, we got her started last video, we took it off the trailer, we, I let you, let you hear it run, we talked about some of the things that I had done to it recently in order to get the thing back up so I could use it again. But today, because this thing has sat for so long, uh, believe it or not, these old, these old tractors, uh, these old machines, they, they weep oil. They weep hydraulic oil. They weep uh, transmission oils. They weep uh, differential oils. I've got to fill those back up. When I drive this thing up and down the uh, driveway, it clatters, it makes noise. So I need to make sure that I've got all my fluids topped off. We're going to talk a little bit today about the M, the M, the MT, a little bit about how we got started. And then finally, I'm going to show you the, the maintenance manuals, talk about where they want this fluid added and what type of fluid they're suggesting that they use. So stick around. Today we talk about John Deere's. From the beginning, I never really had the intention of becoming a collector of John Deere or John Deere tractors. But something about being around them and being around the mystique that, that somehow attaches itself to these big green machines, um, you sort of get sucked into the, the, um, the emotions that, that these these little tractors seem, seem to build in you. Um, I ended up uh, wanting to know more about the tractors. So I purchased this, this book. Uh, the book was published in 1984 and it was written by Wayne Brohill. And I remember when the book was published, there was a really strong need in the um, John Deere community to to, to get a hold of this this book because it, it is it is um, God it is almost 900 pages long and it is it is just so much information about John Deere from its from from his time in Vermont through through his 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 career and the career and the um, the expansion of the company and in the book, Brohill talks about the building of a new John Deere production plant in Dubuque. And one of the first machines that were made or built there was the, the M or the Model M. And, and that's, that's this tractor. This is an MT, which is T stands for the trike. But the Model M was actually introduced uh, in mid-1947. And the M was considered one of the first general purpose tractors. Uh, and it was rated at 14.39 horsepower. And that 14 horse was at the draw bar. And it incorporated what Brohill talks about is an integral uh, system or hydraulic system, which they call the Touchomatic, which was a way of attaching the equipment. And you were able to control that equipment by two levers that were in front of the seat between, between your knees. And everything from the mowing machine to the plow, all of it was, was integrated into the, into the machine itself. So all, those, all that equipment has to, had to be bought specifically for the M and the MT tractor. When I bought the tractor, there were several John Deere uh, farm uh, dealers around, around my area because uh, 40 years ago, farming was still fairly, fairly integral to how, how my community or how the communities around here operated. Not so much anymore. I mean, we've, we've so moved off the farm uh, in, in, in Western New Hampshire now. But anyway, back in the day, uh, you could go to the John Deere dealer and you could still get OEM parts. And 
One of the things that I did, one of the early things that I did was to go and get all the manuals for this tractor that I could. I got the original owner's manual for, and they call it for the M series. It, it's basically the same. And then finally, the service manual for the MT tractor. Now the MT, again, because it's specific to the trike or tricycle geared uh, tractor, uh, it, it deals with certain certain mechanisms that are specific to the to the MT. So what we're going to do today is I want to fill up all those oil reserves and we're going to use the service manuals in order to to get the right fluids and to get the correct amounts. All right. So let's go put some oil in this tractor. Filling up the hydraulic fluid for the Touchomatic, uh, one of the instructions, or the instructions require you to loosen this um, drain plug, and you're supposed to fill it up until fluid starts to come out of the drain plug. Well, unfortunately, this is one of those things that's, um, that's rusted. It's sort of, it doesn't want to move. I can't open it. It spins here freely. So that's something else I'm going to have to fix sometime in the future. So, unfortunately, I can't open that, but it is fairly close to the top of the uh, reservoir. So, we're going to just fill it up with, with hydraulic fluid uh, until, until we're somewhere at the level of that drain plug, and then, and then we'll be good for right now. So, to fill this, there's a large cap uh, underneath the seat. So, I've had to roll the seat frame back, and we'll just give this a tug. this up. Now one of the things that this does is it really exposes the entire top of the housing. So we need to be careful that we don't get a lot of junk down inside there. Uh, it's actually pretty clean so it should be fine. All right and this is the drain plug or drain cap, I guess. Now the manual calls for a straight 10 weight uh, hydraulic oil. And this says AW32 hydraulic fluid, but on the back it identifies it as an SAE 10W. So this is what is required. I look down in there and it is right down to the bottom. So let's go ahead and start adding this and see where it takes us. This is one gallon. Now the manual says that the capacity is three and a half quarts and I'm going to tell you right now, we're not anywhere near the fill line on this. I am probably going to add the entire gallon because I am sure that the entire system is empty. All the hydraulic lines, the lift mechanism itself. We added about another half a quart and that's got it up near the top of the fill pipe. And I think we'll leave it right there. And then we'll put the, the fill cap back on. Tighten it back up. Alright. Now these levers are the control levers. We will operate those once we're ready to move that lift up and down. Now I just mentioned that there were two levers on the Touchomatic. It's actually called a dual Touchomatic. There's actually two systems that work here. So there are two lifts. 
You got the drawbar lift, which is one of the levers that, that you use. And then there is a second lift that operates the machinery independently from the lift. So those both are used depending on the equipment that you purchased to use the tractor with. Now I mentioned that the tractor weeps oil out of everything and here's the end of the differential for the right wheel. And here is the differential for the left wheel. And you can see that they weep nearly constantly. Same on the touchomatic, you can see some weeping down around in here as well. Underneath is the bottom section of the differential gearing and those those weep pretty constantly actually. And you can see all that black from the oil that's saturated or seeping out. Even the PTO uh, leaks around its, its um, bearing set as well. As well as the uh, touchomatic, uh, it leaks all the way around down in this section down in here. But again, uh, it seems to leak more when it's sitting than when it does when I'm using it. So hopefully we can get this thing back up and uh, in operation again. And we'll probably never get rid of the leaks, but hopefully we can slow them down a little bit. So the differentials, um, the plugs for those are located right on the back of the, um, the gear set. And this is, this is old school American. So there's no, there's no metric here. This is 9 16 and I love it. So. American iron and American wrenches and threads. So the manual uh, wants you to use a 90 weight oil, which I have here. Again, I have this in a uh, one gallon jug. This is not the most convenient place to fill. So I bought one of these little doohickeys and we'll see how they're going to work. I don't know yet. I used to do this with um, the quart jugs with the nozzles on the end, but frankly that's a lot of work. So I'm going to try this, see how this works. This will do it without falling out. This one again calls for three and a half quarts, but the truth is, is you're supposed to fill it until it comes out. So to that end, what I did is I have a drain pan underneath so that when it starts to overfill, it'll fall into the drain pan. 90 weight flow is pretty slow. Okay, it's starting to come out, so I have to pull this and cap it off like that. That's good. That worked really well. So let's go ahead and put the fill plug back in. Use our American 916 wrench to tighten it back up. From there, we'll go over and use the other one. That was actually pretty good. That was probably only about three quarters of a quart low, which is very good. Oh, that one is full. All right, there's that. Let's go do the transmission. And the last thing that I need to do is to fill up the reservoir for the transmission. 
And the fill spout for that is right down next to your right foot, which is right at the base or bottom of the transmission. So let's go ahead and pull that plug out. Again, American thread, American wrench, 11 sixteenths. Ooh, that is coming out like crazy. That is full. And I did not have my pan underneath, which made a mess. We're done. We're done for the hydraulic oil and the transmission and differential oils. So we should be good to go. Actually, I'm very pleased that the only thing that was low was that um, right hand uh, differential. So that's probably where all my noise is coming from. Let's get this thing started and bring it outside and give it a try. If you enjoyed that video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ring the bell, because I really want you to see the next video that I post. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.